communication enabled. Enabled? You gotta be kidding! I've got nothing but snow here! What's going on? I thought we had a lock. I don't know. Hey, I'm the Advocate, and I'm diving into PlayStation Underground, the US's demo disc series from the late 90s. PlayStation Underground was a magazine subscription, just like the official PlayStation magazine. As you're about to see, each issue of PlayStation Underground came with not one, but two demo discs. Because one disc was packed with all sorts of goodies and it just wasn't enough on those compact discs for all the demos they wanted to show off. So let's take a look at these classic demo discs. This first issue was released sometime in 1997 and contains quite the variety of content. The first disc alone contains five playable demos, an interview with the designer for Twisted Metal 2, behind the scenes videos, one downloadable save, a whole bunch of cheat codes for various games, and more. They wanted to make sure you had lots to do with this issue, so why don't we get started and take a look at these demos. The first demo is for Twisted Metal 2. Continuing on with the gameplay of Twisted Metal, this game has you choose a vehicle and roam around various locales, utilizing all sorts of deadly weaponry to destroy your opponent says you compete to be the best in the world, for a chance to win the grand prize, and you wish for anything you desire. This time, the contest takes place across the world, including Moscow, Paris, New York, Hong Kong, and more. The views at release were very positive. Critics were impressed with games larger levels and cast of characters, although the graphics were considered lackluster. The demo let you choose a character for a quick battle in Los Angeles. Web systems. Cool borders. Go for it. Ready? Go. The next demo is for Cool Borders, a simple snowboarding game for the console. The game only offered five courses, in which players race for the fastest time and pull off the best tricks. Reviews on release were mixed. Critics considered the game fun enough, but noted the lack of a two-player mode or even computer-controlled opponents to race against. The game could be considered a fun novelty, but perhaps the later release snowboard games will be better. The demo gives you a timed run on one course. Oh man, I thought you were history. Whee! Get going, man! Time's almost up! 
Oh, rock! That point straight ahead. Hurry up. Yeah. Not bad, but you're going to have to do a lot better. Along to the demo for Jet Moto, known as Jet Rider in Europe. This is a racing game similar to motocross, only the bikes are futuristic hover bikes. Races are split into teams, and these teams are heavily sponsored, as brands such as Mountain Dew, Butterfinger, and K2 Sports can be seen in the game. This game does support split screen, however, where there's more than one player, there are no CPU races present, making split screen a head to head affair. Cheat code to allow two players to race against CPU racers does exist. The game received okay reviews. One of the biggest complaints about the game was the controls and the wonky physics. The game was considered challenging and lengthy, so racing enthusiasts might find it worth a look. The demo has one course for you to try. Here's the demo for NFL Game Day 97. For those of you who want your American football fix, the details of this game offers are pretty well done, as the game includes 30 official teams, modeled stadiums, a full draft, and even the ability to create your own players. The devs even went out of their way to ensure that the AI couldn't be consistently beaten by any specific tactic. As such, the game received very positive reviews on release with many critics finding very little about the game to complain about. The demo lets you play a timed match between the Saints and the Bengals.
Round one. Fight! This issue's import demo is for the first Dynasty Warriors game by Omega Force. Quite different from its strategy hack and slash format the series is best known for today, isn't it? The first game was a simple one on one, yet despite the PlayStation already quite saturated with such games at this point, Dynasty Warriors reviewed rather well at the time. One standout gameplay feature is the fact that the game encouraged parrying your opponent's attacks, causing them to flinch and leaving them vulnerable. The demo only to try a single bout. After the demos, we have the tech Q&A, which details how you can send in questions to the magazine. Following that is a debriefing, which on this disc is where you'll find the interview with the designer for Twisted Metal 2. What we really wanted to do with Twisted Metal was sort of give uh, players the opportunity and, you know, as importantly give ourselves the opportunity to actually participate uh, in an interactive car chase, to actually be behind the wheel of a car chase like in the movie Speed or Terminator uh, or The French Connection. That was really the whole uh, creative inspiration and then it just happened to come along at a time uh, when the technology was right, when we met with our developers single track up in Utah. Uh, We're not done with the videos because next is the behind the scenes section where we get a glimpse at how they made the Twisted Metal 2 trailer. Instead of using a computer composite, we used a real explosion to get the reflection you're about to see in the actor's glasses. The to launch napalm into oncoming traffic. If these are the things you look for in an automobile, it's time you test drive Twisted. And the making of NFL Game Day 97. So what it does is it, for each frame, it will go through and it will figure out where each of these dots actually were. They really don't mean anything until you start moving them. And once you start moving them, you can see basically where the hips and the knees and the ankles and all the joints are. This disc also comes with one downloadable save for the game Carnage Heart. This save gives you a squad of powerful OKEs, making your gameplay that much easier. Did you think we were done with the videos? No, we still have the E3 video to cover. A time lapse and quick look at that year's E3. The Bulletin, a collection of other random things related to the magazine, such as contests, advertisements, classifieds, secrets, and credits.
speaking of contests, this first issue had a big one for its subscribers, the details of which were mentioned in the disc sleeve. The Code Book Cheat codes and other hints for many games out at the time, right there on the demo disc for players to peruse. Quite the handy resource indeed, wouldn't you say? And thus, we have reached the end of Disc 1. A lot of stuff packed in this very first disc. It definitely kept a lot of players busy for hours. Aided, of course, by Disc 2. Yes, don't forget that second disc that came with the first issue. While Disc 1 was a compilation of various demos, videos, promotions, contests and cheat codes, Disc 2 is strictly for the demos. There are six playable demos and one preview on Disc 2. So let's take a look at those two. The first demo on disc 2 is for Carnage Heart. This is one game that can get very complex very fast. So much so that the full game actually came out with not just a beefy manual, but also a strategy guide and a second disc purely designed for teaching players how to play the game. If you're still interested in the game, I'll try and give you as basic a rundown as I can. The game is about designing and programming combat robots the game calls OKEs. These OKEs are then assigned to a unit, and those units are assigned tasks to do, which can include things like defending or capturing bases, marking patrol routes, or fighting enemy units. Each OKE's combat style is determined by the software and programming the player has assigned to them. So if you're a fan of deeper games that let you plan, program and micromanage things, you might enjoy this one. Critics at the time of release certainly did, as many of them enjoy the deep strategic gameplay, all the bothers did warn players of the game's overwhelming complexity and lack of direct control. This demo gives you one mission to play around with. The next demo is for the original Tomb Raider, a 3D action-adventure game starring the iconic Lara Croft, an archaeologist who is hired to find an artifact called the Scion of Atlantis. Players control Lara as she explores huge levels split into multiple areas and rooms, finding various items and treasures while fending off enemies and solving puzzles. The controls may be tank-like and quite clunky and outdated by today's standards, but they aren't the worst and it doesn't take long to get used to them. Reviews at release were overwhelmingly positive. The game was widely praised for its variety and depth of control, as well as the graphics and environments. Some critics claimed it stood out from other titles at the time, and the game often made it to many magazines' Game of the Year awards. In fact, Laura herself became so popular that she became the face of many commercials and magazine covers at the time. However, this would not be without turmoil, as the publisher Eidos would often focus on Lara's sexuality at the expense of her characterization. 
This caused Lara's original designer, Toby Gard, to leave Core Design before the sequel was even out the door, although he would return to assist in the development for the 2007 remake, Tomb Raider Anniversary. The demo gives you a section of one of the earlier levels to explore. Satellite, next up. Proceed with first mission objective. After that, we have the demo for Mech Warrior 2. Pilot and Mech can take part in the Refusal War, wherein two clans pit their mechs against each other amongst several planets from the Battletech franchise. Players can join either clan, and then participate in missions for their clan. Whilst between missions, players can customize their mechs, including changing the armor, engine, or weapons. During missions, players will have to manage their mech and ensure the mech doesn't overheat due to repeated firing of their weapons, as too much heat buildup will cause damage to the mech. Reviews at release were very positive. Everything from the gameplay to the graphics to the soundtrack was praised. The demo gives you a single mission.
those of you with arachnophobia might not like this next game. Spider by Boss Game Studios. It's a 2.5D platform game where you control a spider with cybernetic attachments that you use to overcome obstacles and deal with all the strange creatures that are infesting the locales. Quite an interesting premise. However, the game was released to mixed reviews as at the time people were more interested in fully 3D experiences instead of basic 2D platformers. Rage Racer. Racers, start your engines and let's get it on. Three, two, one, go! The race is on. Show them what you've got. Another Ridge okay, Racer sequel from Namco. This is Rage Racer. A little bit more drab and gritty and a little bit more in-depth than the previous Ridge Racer games. However, that apparently wasn't enough for reviewers at the time, as many considered it as just more Ridge Racer gameplay. Nevertheless, the game still received favorable reviews. Rage Racer allows players to earn credits, which they can then use to purchase new cars and upgrade them. And there are also some secret cars to unlock. Odd World, Abe's Odyssey. We all know about this one, but just in case, here's a quick summary. This is Rupture Farms. They say it's the biggest meat processing plant on Odd World. That's me. My name is Abe. I used to work here. Well, I was really a slave, like all the others. Then I learned they were gonna turn us into lunch. That's when I knew I had to escape. So, get me out of here and help me rescue the others.
you. So our boy Abe works in a plant that processes meat for consumption. But the creatures providing the meat are going extinct. So the higher-ups decide, screw it, let's just turn our employees into the meat instead. Which seems counterproductive, but video games. So Abe, one of said employees, learns of this plan and gets the hell out of Dodge. With the intent to rescue as many of his fellow Mudokans as he can. This game is a platformer puzzle game. We have to move through the levels while not only avoiding dangerous traps and enemies, but also rescuing other Madokans. You can do this by using what the game calls Game Speak, a combination of buttons that let you talk with Madokans, telling them to follow you so you can lead them to a bird portal, which Abe opens by chanting at it. Video games. Chanting can also allow Abe to possess some of the enemies and control them, which is used to solve puzzles and give yourself a laugh by making them run into electric fences. <laughs> this demo gives you the first rupture farm level to escape from. Oh yeah, and did I mention this game has a fart button? <laughs> The last thing to see on this disc is a preview for Jurassic Park The Lost World. We've finally reached the end, and we've seen everything both discs of the first issue of PlayStation Underground has to offer. Well, actually, no, we haven't seen everything because the magazine decided to leave hidden secrets in their discs. Secrets which can only be found using special cheat codes to be inputted at the right time. Perhaps I will cover all these secrets in a separate video. So what did you think of this first issue of PlayStation Underground? Two discs, 11 demos, so many videos and cheat codes, and much more. So much 90s charm, and you can easily see how much love and dedication they've put into making this. They really wanted players to enjoy these demo discs. It's just a shame we'll never see anything like this in today's gaming environment. Subscribe to see me cover more underground issues, and check out my channel to see me cover the UK magazine demo discs. You can also read the video description to find an invite to my Discord, where you can chat with me and other classic PlayStation enthusiasts. I'm the Advocate, and I live for old demo discs such as these. <laughs> <laughs>